Welcome back everybody. It is day seven of Vlogmas. It has been another great day. It was a long day at work, but I did manage to get my, my knitting quota in for the night. Came home and put on a Christmas movie. Yeah, only one. Two hours of knitting and this is what I accomplished. I got my, knit my Christmas dishcloth finished. This is the garter slip stitch dishcloth and it's done and it's pretty much a perfect square it's about seven inches square so my little trick to see if it's square is I fold it corner to corner and these edges should match and it's pretty close this was really fun it was a really fun knit I love how the slip stitches make it look like there's little white polka dots in there. Kind of looks like snowflakes, doesn't it? This pattern is definitely knit night proof. I knit this without any pattern for the last couple of times that I picked it up and it went relatively quick. I could read my stitches. I knew which color I was working on. It's a two thumbs up pattern. Definitely a keeper for another dishcloth. And actually, I'm going to start another dishcloth right away because I still have part balls left. Enough to do at least one more dishcloth. So I'm going to cast on and get these started. So this may be a good time. I'm going to insert the video that I did fixing my knitting needle. You know, all year long, I've been knitting with these two mismatched needles. The end even fell off this one and I've just kept going on. I did find the little stopper here and I did set it somewhere, you know, safe that I can't recall at the moment, but it is somewhere around. So if I want to glue it back on, I can. This is the needle that had the little split in the end. So I'll put the video in here and you can see my attempt, my attempt at fixing this and you'll see if it worked or not. And I'll come back in a second and we'll chat some more. I'm going to show you how we're going to fix this wooden knitting needle that has developed a little bit of a split. As you can see, it, it allows the yarn to get caught when you're knitting. See how that's catching on there? So it's really, it's unusable because you can't have your yarn getting split like that every time you're working a stitch. So what I'm going to do is attempt to file this down. I've got two nail files, a coarser one, and then one that is pretty fine to finish it off. And then I have a little bit of melted beeswax with a little drop of cooking oil in there. So I am going to just lightly file this just to see if I can get that catch off of here. And worst case scenario, if it doesn't work, I'm not out anything because this needle is headed for the garbage at the way it is because it's unusable. Okay, that feels that feels pretty good. I'm gonna switch to the finer one. Can just ever so slightly feel that there. Still feel it. This is a Nipix needle. 
And I'm not sure if the problem is that there's glue or something has come undone if the needles dried out. I'm not sure what the cause was. I have used this needle a lot and I can still feel it. I've used this needle a lot this year. This has been my favorite dishcloth knitting needle and I have used this every week of this year. This needle has been, oh, I can still feel it. This, this needle's been in use every week. I've been knitting at least one dishcloth a week. So this has been used a lot. Oh, that feels much better. We'll see. Like I said, we're not out anything. I think that feels really smooth. Now I'm just going to take a little bit of this beeswax and go over this. Now I have heard this is something that is probably a good idea to do on your needles anyways, just to help condition them, help to keep them from drying out. I don't know if I, maybe if I had done that earlier, this would have prevented the problem. I'm not sure. Oh my gosh. That feels, I don't know if I can feel something, but it feels like 99% better for sure. I guess the true test will be to try knitting with it. I'm just going to rub that in and I'm going to let this sit for maybe a couple hours, let it soak in and then just take a cloth and just wipe off any excess and I'll give it a try and then I'll come back and let you know what do I think. I don't know. We'll see. That's it. Until the knit test and then we'll know for sure if this was worth trying to save a needle. Okay, so I did go back and I did file this a little more. As I was rubbing some more of that olive oil and beeswax in there, I felt I could still feel a little catch. So I really went back, went back to the coarse emery board and I really pushed hard and filed. And I filed both ways. I filed up and down and I filed crossways. And that seemed to do the trick feels pretty much before I said it was about 99% feels a hundred percent gone now that makes me feel better I there I pretty much worked in and, and rubbed off all the excess I'm just going to let it sit and dry and then we'll try knitting with it well I am back with the verdict on this needle fix and I have to say just from feeling this it feels a hundred percent, absolutely perfect. Just as if it was brand new. I can't feel any catch on there at all. And it's not sticky. I've just let it sit all day. Sat probably over eight hours and the residue is all absorbed in. So just for the final test, let's do a few stitches on this dishcloth. Oh my gosh, it is fixed. Okay, I'm just going to kind of rotate the needle just to make sure we're getting all sides of it. <laughs> I am so glad I did not throw this needle away. Such a simple fix. And I'm going to get some more mileage and lots more stitches out of this needle. Thanks for watching, everyone. Okay, so by now you've seen the video and you've seen that it was a huge success. I'm so glad that I took the time to fix this. And like somebody left an, a message in the comments and they said, you know, Louise, these are not fix needles. You, they will replace them. And you're absolutely right. And I have had them replace them in the past, but um, 
Anyway, it was a quick and easy fix, so I didn't need to worry about making a phone call or having them replace it. Now I have my favorite dishcloth knitting needle back. So I will try to find the end for this and I will hot glue it back on and I will have a brand new needle with a lot of miles on it. <laughs> but it's a keeper. So I highly suggest if you can fix, if it happens to your needle, to try and fix it. And like I said, I watched a video, like there's not a lot, If you, I tried YouTubing it and I've always said this, I said, I'd like to know what is not on YouTube. Well, I only found one video on how to, actually it wasn't even how to fix a snag in your needle. It was just how to condition your needles. And apparently there is some kind of, it's like a beeswax and oil, and I think she said there was some essential oils mixed in. There's a little tin that you can buy for wooden cutting boards. So probably at a kitchen supply store, you could probably find that. And she did also mention at some knitting stores, there are little containers that basically the same ingredients. And it is marketed towards wooden, wooden knitting needles to coat them maybe once a year, maybe every six months if you think they're getting dry. So I don't know. I've had wooden needles for years and I've never done that. I don't know. Has anybody ever done that? Just condition them, put some beeswax on them or a bit of oil and let it soak in. I don't know. Maybe something to consider. I'm not sure what the cause was on this. I kind of think that these, the colors on these needles, is that focusing? Somewhere I heard, I read that there we go all those colors that those are layers that are put on and then probably glued down i'm not sure how but I, so i don't know if that's something like maybe the glue just dried out on one of those layers not really sure i'm just guessing but anyways it did it did take a little bit of filing like i was trying to be really careful with it because it's my favorite needle i don't you know i didn't like want to take it emery board to it really hard but in the end I did have to really kind of put a little muscle behind it and and then what I found really helped was filing both ways and that got rid of there's absolutely no catch on here at all I wouldn't even know it is like a hundred percent back to normal so it was well worth it and I had to get my beeswax I had a candle. I had a beeswax candle and I just got a sharp paring knife and just kind of cut out right in the center around the wick. So when I do burn it, hopefully where I, I kind of cut out a few chunks of beeswax, that'll kind of all melt and my candle will look back to normal again. But I did just a teeny tiny little bit, a little dab of, um, I think did I have olive oil or just vegetable oil, just a little bit, microwaved it for... A couple of minutes I did like 30 seconds 30 seconds 30 seconds so I didn't want to do too much and just kind of melted it works like a charm fantastic so I'm back on track I'm gonna keep going with these knitting needles these mismatched needles have served me well all year I'm gonna use them right to the end of the year so that's it for dishcloth my hat oh I said I was gonna cast on for hat number two which I did so here's my part ball of yarn, which I'm hoping, I don't, I don't know if I'll get a whole hat out of it. If not, I'll just have to, to, um, pull out another ball, find where I am in the pattern repeat and carry on. But four millimeter needle I've cast on and I've started round one in ribbing. So it started, it's on the needles. So now I can just pick it up whenever the urge strikes me. Because I find I have to get the project right on the needles because if I'm thinking about hat knitting and it's like, oh, I got to cast on, it means I got to find the needle, oh, I got to cut, you know, blah, 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 then I find I don't do it. But if it's on the needle, I can just pick it up and I can work a few rounds and carry on and it goes, I, and I get it done so much faster. I procrastinate if it's not already cast on. I don't know why, but I find myself putting off the casting on and what, and it takes just a few minutes. Kind of silly, really, isn't it? Second project, second, third project 
is my sock. So when I showed it to you yesterday, I had the heel flap done and I was ready to work the heel turn. So look at that, my magical heel turn. There's the heel flap and beautiful heel turn. I picked up stitches on both sides. I'm back in the round and I've worked two decrease rounds already. So I'm on my way. I was gonna say I'm well on my way. I don't know if I'm well on my way, but it started. So there again, it started. And I think I would have had the same problem if I, if I had just set this down once I turned the heel and didn't pick up these stitches immediately, this probably would have sat for a couple of days before I picked it up. But now I'm set, it's ready. I can just pick it up and I can carry on. So I think that's what I'm just gonna work on for the rest of tonight and tomorrow is just work a few more decrease rounds. I don't know, I don't have anything specifically planned out other than I know I need to get a bunch of sock knitting done and work on the hat and I think I'll do another dishcloth. I think I'll just keep working on those. What I really want to focus on is I want to get a few more finished projects done out of this yarn. Boy this ball looks like it's in bad shape doesn't it? Maybe I should just wind it. This is my main goal. I want to get a few more hats and a couple of cowls done out of here. So this is what I really have to work on and my sock, I was thinking about this today. I My goal was to finish it for the 24th, which means I really should try for the 23rd so I can weave my ends in and Kitchener stitch the toes. But then I thought the Fiber Friends were podcasting again on the 18th. So I'm wondering if I could try to get these finished for that podcast. We'll see. My first, so now I'm going to make my first deadline. Oh my gosh, which means the 18th, which means I really need the 17th. Hmm, might be doable. If I can't do for the 17th, then the backup date is the 24th, <laughs> which will totally easily be doable. So we'll see. It's just all about prioritizing and actually sitting down and knitting on it. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do, the last thing I'm going to do for tonight's video is I'm going to work on this. I am really excited to see how big this turns out. So I was thinking about how many wraps this was going to take. This was the large pom-pom that I made yesterday. And this took, each half was, I'm pretty sure I said 60 wraps with three strands of yarn to make this size pom-pom. And this one is quite a bit bigger. This is gonna take a lot of yarn. I may actually weigh the pom-pom when I'm done just to see how much yarn it took. So I'm gonna take all this off because I wanna start from scratch. And, uh, and I'm gonna make it three colors. I'm gonna use the red, green, and white again. This one looks really cute though, with just red and white, wouldn't it? Maybe I'll make some more of those at some point for my pom-pom wreath. I was kind of thinking about that and thinking what colors I would do, some solids, trying to plan out how I would, what size I would use. I really like the little pom-poms. There's gonna be a couple of little, a few little ones on there, some big ones, and then tying some little ones. Maybe I'll do the little ones solid red. Then they would almost look like um, holly berries. I wonder. Let me do that. Okay, we are empty. Look how big this is, you guys. So this is supposed to make a four and a half inch pom-pom. I'm gonna get my yarn. And I'm gonna fast forward this because I have a feeling this is gonna take a little while and my arm may get sore wrapping this, we'll see. This will be a good test to see what kind of muscle strength I can build up making pom-poms here. Okay, so I've got my white end, I've got my green end, and my red. Okay, get untangled here. 
and I am going to start right now. Okay, it took me four minutes to wrap and it's 140 wraps. So it is just a little over full. I'm at 40. I'm going to do a couple more just for good measure. 41, 42, 43, 44, we'll do 140, 145. And then we're going to snap them back in place. Mm. I'm going to put a couple more wraps on here. thinking in here I think I need a couple more so 145 46 47 48 yeah I think that's all I can do okay I put on 148 and we'll close it 148 I'm going to snip it. Ugh. There we go. And we will wrap this side now. I'm excited to see how this is going to turn out. So I'm going to do 148 on this side again. I'll see you back here in three minutes. There we go. I'm going to close it, snap it together, and cut the tails. All right. <laughs> Look at that. That is one big looking pom-pom. Okay, right while I've got the yarn here, I'm just gonna cut a tail here. And now it's time to cut. This might take a little. Well, that's not too bad. Ah. <laughs> So I said, there's a lot of yarn wrapped around here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to cut through it all in one go here. I may have to kind of divide these. So that when I put the scissors in, I'm just going to slide it through the center half and just snip the top half. And then now cut through all the way. It's just a little too thick, which I like we're doing it all in one shot, but there's just too much yarn on here. Well, that's what it's looking like so far. Almost to the top. I think this is going to be, I'm going to put this on the wreath. 
I'm thinking about putting one, I'm thinking at the bottom, I'm thinking of either putting one really large one at the top or one at the bottom. I'm thinking at the bottom. So I have a plan for this one. It's going to have to go on the larger wreath holder though. <laughs> I think this is going to practically fill that little tiny one. This is why you want really sharp scissors for doing this. Okay. Okay, my fingers are getting a little sore. But we're making progress. Gonna have to take smaller, smaller amounts of yarn in the scissors here. So it's not quite so hard on my hands. You guys might be, be able to do this better than I can. Whew. All right, almost there. Just that little bit left. Ta-da. Opened. Okay. Put the tie around it. So if you're just watching this video for the first time, time. If you haven't watched the videos from the yesterday and the day before that, that's where I talk a little more in depth about how to use these clover pom-pom makers. So I have just wrapped the yarn in that groove where I was cutting with the scissors. And you want to hear that click. You want to hear it pull tight. And then I just do it again. And there we go. All right. Moment of truth. We can. <laughs> this thing's huge. <laughs> All right. Let's open it up. This is so exciting. That, oh my gosh. Look at that. And this side, have to un. I just love that these have like safety locks on them. <laughs> these big pom pom makers. That just makes me giggle. All right, open and open. And then we're gonna find the little discs on either side. Okay, that bobbed right off. And look at how big this thing is. <laughs> now, let's see. Hopefully that fills in nice. Let's give it a fluff. Okay. Pretty good. <laughs> look how big this pom-pom is. It's huge. Oh my gosh. Look at that. So it needs a little bit of a haircut. It's kind of. All right, let's trim it up a little bit. Oops. Kind of make it look a little more symmetrical here. Snip, snip, snip. Okay, I think so. This is going to go on the pom-pom wreath, which I have here. Let's, I'll hold it up here in a second. Let's see. I think I'm just going to leave it for right now. Look at that. Pretty good for a, a giant pom-pom, right? So th this, this was our big one from yesterday. Here's the big one from today. <laughs> oh my gosh, that makes me so happy. <laughs> it's 
So here, <laughs> here's the little pom pom wreath. Um, it's like as big as the center. <laughs> Obviously, it's not going to go on this one. I don't think. That would be kind of fun, though. You could just... I think this one needs a little more trimming. I think it needs a little something right there. But I'll worry. I'll worry about that a little bit. Okay, bigger pom-pom. Or, well, I'm making the bigger wreath frame. I think I'm going to do something like this. And just put this one large pom-pom on the bottom. And then fill up with, with um, smaller ones. So there we go. There's the giant pom-pom. So I really quite like this. What do you guys think? Has this convinced any of you? I know there's a couple of people I'm thinking of specifically who are not pom-pom lovers. Does the big one, does that change your mind? Do you absolutely love it? Or you probably not. <laughs> Anyways, I really like it. I think it is a statement piece. That's what I think it is. I think... <laughs> Daisy likes it, apparently. <laughs> she would probably love to play with it. Okay, everybody. Well, I think that is it for tonight. So I will be back tomorrow. And um, maybe I'll have some pom-poms tied on here. Or at least some more made. And we can kind of figure out how we're going to position them and put them on here. Oh, this has been really fun. This was a good way to end the night, making a super big pom-pom. So I hope everybody is having a fantastic day. I hope you're getting prepared for Christmas and just enjoying Christmas movies and Christmas music and maybe eating a few Christmas cookies along the way. I will see you back here tomorrow. <laughs> Telltale sign. I'm covered in fuzz. Anyways, I will see you guys back here tomorrow. Have a fantastic day and I will chat with you tomorrow. Happy knitting.